This tutorial is for the PC Steam version of Pavlov. If you were looking to make a push map for Pavlov Shack, this is not the right tutorial. I suggest watching the entirety of this video before giving this a go yourself. Also, please check the pinned comment in case I have made any mistakes or forgotten something. This video is aimed at people who already have an understanding of how to use the Pavlov mod kit. If you are new to modding, I suggest watching my other guide on making a mod from scratch. I will not be covering any level design tips in this video. Once in your level, go to the search bar on the left and search for Pavlov push settings and drag this into your level. Here you can set the attacker starting tickets and attacker max tickets. If the max attacker tickets is set to minus one, there will not be a maximum. You can give the defenders tickets, however I highly suggest you do not do this, as the defenders currently have no way of regaining tickets, so unless you give them an absurd number of tickets, they almost always will lose. But this option is still there if you want it. Tickets per wave is how many tickets the attackers will be awarded when tickets are awarded. By default, tickets are awarded once all objectives have been captured. If you tick Award Tickets per Objective, then this number of tickets will be awarded for every objective captured. This is also where you can set the skins for either team. The in-game voice lines are set to which World War II skin you assign here. It should also be mentioned, you can set the ID for custom skins here if you have added any to the custom skins table. If Use World War II items is ticked, medkits, pills, and knives will be their World War II variants. If it's not ticked, they will be their modern day variants. Grace period is how long it takes for the spawns and out of bounds volumes to move to the next objective once the current objectives have been captured. Locker refresh time is how long it takes for a space in a locker to become available again after someone using that class has died. It is also important to manually set the loadout room's locations, otherwise they may spawn within the play area. To do this, expand on both of the loadout rooms and click Override Loadout Location on both. Then drag an actor into your level and put it where you want your locker rooms to be. Right click on the location of the actor and click Copy. Then go back to your push settings and paste that location where it says Loadout Spawn Location. Move the actor a fair distance then copy and paste the coordinates in the defender loadout. Make sure to delete the actors afterwards, otherwise they will cast shadows in game. In the left search bar, search for push loadout proxy and drag one into your level. You can add a loadout by pressing add element. For the sake of this tutorial, I will only be using one. The default maximum number of loadouts is 7, but you can increase this with custom loadout rooms. The loadout title is the name that will appear in game for the class, you can change this to anything. Primary hand is what will spawn in the player's main hand. Primary back is what will be spawned holstered on the player's back. And secondary is what will be spawned in the player's pistol slot. If you leave any of these empty, nothing will be spawned in that slot. You also have the option of whether or not these items will be spawned with default attachments. You can set what spawns in the knife slot to any of the following. Knife, medkit, ammo crate, or repair tool. Anything set under grenades will spawn in the player's chest. Typically this is where you'd set the ID for grenades you want this class to have, but you can set anything here. You can also decide if the loadout has pills, a syringe, and a helmet. Under the Spawn with Mine drop-down box, you can set the loadout to spawn with an anti-personnel mine or an anti-tank mine. You can also set the default armor and health here. Setting the health in the loadout is not how you make the map hardcore, as players can still heal above the health you set here. I'll be covering hardcore push in another video. At the bottom of this list, you can set the maximum number of players with this loadout. And below that, you can set the multiplier for how much this number will increase depending on how many players are in the match. If you don't want the number to increase, then set the multiplier to zero. 
Underneath the list of loadouts is what team this loadout proxy is for. 1 is for attackers and 0 is for defenders. If you leave this set to minus 1, then these loadouts will be used on both teams. I'm going to set the team ID to 0, then duplicate it and set the team ID to 1. The last thing I'm going to mention regarding loadout proxies is that you are able to spawn custom items and guns with them, assuming you've added the items to your global info. Although these won't appear visually in the lockers, so you'd have to add their mesh in the level where the lockers would spawn. Now I'm going to show you how to set up the objectives. To do so, you'll need to move a couple example folders into your UGC. Go to Plugins, Custom Map Tools Content, and you want to select Blueprints and Examples. Then you want to move these to your UGC. And immediately after, you want to fix up redirects on the original location. Go to your Blueprint folder, then push an Advanced Objective. Drag both of these blueprints into your level. Open up the Objective Actor, then go to Viewport, and click on Destroyed Mesh. Then scroll down to where it says Collisions, and set this to No Collisions. If you don't do this, the destroyed mesh will have collisions before the bomb has been destroyed. Select the bomb blueprint and set the objective actor ref to the one you dragged into the level with it. The push objective actor is the mesh that gets destroyed when the bomb goes off. The normal mesh and destroyed mesh are variables that you can set in class defaults. Using one of these is not mandatory. In the bomb blueprint, you can set a custom sound to play when it has detonated, as well as a custom particle effect. The custom sound does not overwrite any vanilla sounds. If you scroll down, you can set the objective ID and the objective marker. The objective ID is effectively the stage in the campaign you're at. And the objective marker is the individual bombs and capture zones within that stage. You can have a maximum of 9 objectives numbered from 0 to 8. Each of those objectives can have a maximum of 6 objective markers labeled A to F. You can also customize the explosion time, the inner radius, and the outer radius. Anyone inside the inner radius will be killed immediately, while anyone in the outer radius will be damaged. You might have noticed there is a cap zone example in the blueprints folder. As of making this video, the example in the mod kit is broken and will not work with an additional code. Please check the pinned comment to see if this has been fixed. If you are watching this in the future when the cap zone example has been fixed, you can use it almost the exact same as a normal bomb objective. Just drag it into your level, set the objective ID and the objective marker, same as you would a bomb. The tick amount is how quickly the attackers capture the objective. The untick amount is how quickly the defenders reclaim the objective once there's no attackers in its radius. You can also toggle if it can be capped in a vehicle and if it instantly refills when there's no attackers in the zone. And again, please check the pinned comment to see if this blueprint has been fixed in whatever the newest version of the mod kit is. Search for spawn and drag a Pavlov push spawn into the level. Set the team ID to 0 for defenders and to 1 for attackers. Then set which objective ID this spawn is tied to. Both teams will need a separate set of spawns for each objective. You cannot use the same push spawn for multiple objectives. Out of bounds volumes are the areas that players from opposite teams cannot enter, and setting them up is almost the exact same as setting up the push spawns. Search for bounds and drag a Pavlov underscore out of bounds volume into your level. Expand this volume to cover the entire area you want it to protect. 
typically that team spawn. Set allowed team ID to the ID of the team you want this volume to protect. If it's set to minus one, it'll damage all players, regardless of team. Also make sure to set which objective ID this out of bounds volume is tied to. If you found this video helpful, a subscription would be appreciated.